Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And this video is the kickoff introductory video to an 18-part series I have here on making a game called Boxel or Sokoban. I'll be describing that here in a second. And we're going to make it in GameMaker Studio 2, and then we're going to port it over and create our own game engine and put the game on top of it. So it sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but it's going to be very rewarding because at the end of this, you have a working engine in C++. You have a game you can throw on top of it. You have a portfolio piece that you can advance and turn into something that you can go on to do great things and get that job interview and get that job. So what are we doing exactly here? So here, we're going to be making a game. Here, since I already finished everything up, let me, let me just drag myself over here. What? And so what I can do here is say that this is the Game Maker version, Game Maker Visual Studio 2. And so the first three parts of this video series makes the complete game, and you, what you see here is what you get. And so 720p resolution is what we're going for for both games. 60 by 60 is every tile you see here. The button objects may be a little different, and the background image may be a little different, but that's what we're going for. And so the game is going to keep track of three different levels, keep track of the best scores for the three different levels, and then a quick game button, and then each of the three levels obviously plays differently, has a return to main button, uh, re return to main menu button. And if you beat the game, the computer, obviously the game knows that you have beat the level, and it determines if you have a better score, and it sets the better score accordingly. And it's going to be file, and we're going to use a file instead of session data, so the best score will be maintained throughout different sessions of your gameplay. So this is the same game completed already in uh, in the C++ slash SFML engine. As you can see, graphically, the the graphics are the same. I couldn't find the exact, I couldn't get the exact font to work. So I found a, you know, just a boring font to accommodate for this just to get things going. And your font class can take over and put in anything you want as long as you follow the rules that I have for you on how to set up the graphic for that. But as you can see, we, get, we have the game working in two completely separate realms. And again, if I eliminated all the game data, I would still have a re reusable code base that is very similar and on a very small level to what the Game Maker suite can do for us. So just to discuss every part of the series here. So in part one, we are going to make the main menu in Game Maker. So we're going to talk about setting up all the graphics and setting all the text and all the way the, the mouse over, mouse leave events and things like that. And so just the main menu all by itself. Part two then is the entire gameplay of the Boxel game. So getting the characters in here, moving them around, getting the boxes to push, getting the goals to recognize when the win condition is met, those kind of things. That will all be covered in part two. Part three then is basically polish, finishing up everything, you know, adding the complete polish, adding all the file access and best steps taken and this and that and everything else and making sure everything kind of falls in line. So after part three, you have a fully working Game Maker Studio game. So if nothing else, if all you care about is Game Maker, work to part three and then you can just let this thing fall away because everything else then is the conversion. The next 15 parts converts this into C++ using SFML. So part four, we get SFML running. I don't necessarily help you along with it, but once you have SFML running in your in your Visual Studio toolbox there, then we take the hello world that they give us on their website and we start making it into an object-oriented game class because we need this game class to be the overarching hierarchy, you know, like the master, the brain of the whole game. So we basically just take the hello world and just expand it out. So part five then, obviously we continue refining and adding functionality to the game class because four was just getting everything working and refactoring and then five was adding functionality, especially when it comes to like changing the window height, changing the frame rate, things like that that you know that's we can work with that with API calls, but wouldn't an engine be nicer? And that's the whole point of this is, yeah, you can give me API calls all day long, but someone still has to put them all together into a coherent unit. And that's, uh, and we all nowadays, of course, prefer engines over APIs, you know, because we'd rather be given the whole kit and caboodle. So part six, then, we take what we have. We add a keyboard and mouse handling class. So obviously we can handle keys on the keyboard. We can handle mouse clicks and mouse moves and things like that. So that covers everything you see in part six. Part seven, we add room slash scene functionality. GameMaker uses the term room for, you know, what's going on in a specific scene, but 
the real world uses more of the, the idea of a scene, scene class. So, you know, that kind of stuff, step and draw events and things like that. And you can kind of see what's going on here in this. That's what we're creating. So far, you know, everything is kind of building out slowly from here. So part eight, we're going to add object functionality. So the, the you know, we're going to like create the base game class object that everything is going to derive from, so that all you know our game works just like in Game Maker with the object class. Everything basically derives from it. You never really truly notice it, but yeah, of course, everything has very common basic. Uh, member variables and functionality at least to get you started, right? So that's what we're going to do. The very basics of that start creating that hierarchy. So then part nine here is we're going to add a sprite texture manager, basically the way the sprite resources are handled in Game Maker, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. I guess my green screen never even noticed my green screen ruined. But this is supposed to be a green circle, but you get the point. And so the texture manager start working it into everything because we need to make sure that if I have 6,000 objects in my scene and they're all using the same graphic, I only have one graphic. So it's a flyweight pattern basically is what we're trying to design. But it's a flyweight design pattern, but it's actually just a map, a, a piece of map structure. So part nine is just to get that going. Part 10 then, now we come on back and start like we're getting ready finally to start building the game with the engine at the same time. So we move over to Game Maker Studio one more time to create a level editor because it would take forever to just go in and write all sorts of code for put this object here, put this object there. It would just take forever in a day. So when we do this, you can create a visual graphic, you know, obviously in Game Maker, and then the software will produce the text files that will be used for the level generator and be, be used in your game to play the specific levels. It's pretty cool. So that's that's part 10. Part 11, use that output from the, you know, from the game maker level editor and actually get it so that your game can pop up because this previously here you can get it going in game maker studio but this is after the end of part 11 you see here this is the level that i designed in this in the you know in game maker running with objects for everything that's not just a picture file these are all objects just like in game maker running in my engine nothing moves or anything but at least we have it so that after after part 11 you have this uh, you have everything built up here so then of course once we have everything like you know going this is a big video i believe this is about an hour long that we're adding a ton of functionality visibility movement you know like direction and speed these are big deals right when it comes to visibility depth values alarms because we need the ability to to have the character move and stop over a period of time those kind of things there's a lot of different member variables here and a lot of ways to start testing out all the code to make sure it's working. So big video, but it's an important video, and it gets a lot of the object functionality together. So part 13 then is adding animation functionality. So our main character walks around, his little feet walking around, you know, left, right, up, and down. And so we'd like to do that the, basically the same way Game Maker allows the animation. And so by the end of this video, you can have your little character moving around as well. So then pushing on to part 14. Okay, so now we can come back to the main menu. So we create the entire main menu, and then we're, we start out, we start the GUI button class. So you can see there's no text associated with the button after the end of this part, but the button has mouse over, mouse leave, and I can click on it, and I can have it do specific things. So fun, C++ function pointers, and like basically delegate functions and things like that, that is what's covered here in part 14. So part 15 basically takes what we just did, and then adds the font class functionality, so it's basically we just kind of take over the animation and just kind of rework it so that I can pop in any font and have it draw out. It's a little different than the SFML specified font class, but I just wanted to show you that you know with a little bit of tweaking you can actually go ahead and create powerful things like this your own your own font editor. So once I have this font editor in place, I can better customize the GUI button to actually draw some text on top of the buttons. I'm surprised I don't have a new graphic here. Oh well, that's that's the way things go. Okay, so then part 16, after all this time, right, you finally get around to making the actual game and the actual C++ engine. So at the end of 16, you can actually move stuff, you move the player around, push the boxes around and all that kind of stuff, develop the win condition, just kind of set it up so that you know you have a win condition and then we'll... And then I think part 18 is the, the final part where we finalize the win condition here. So part 17, we add room transition effects, the fade in and the fade out. Just to add, you know, Game Maker, the Game Maker version, we didn't do that. But just, it wasn't, the, you know, it, it's something I've done a few times over in the past. 
And actually, in the process of doing part 17, we learned about a little functional flaw in the way that the engine works at the room level. So that, you know, so you know, say, at, at nothing else, part 17 taught us the limitations of the engine in the state that it was currently in. And we just put a Band-Aid on it, knowing if we ever going to make a true, true, real engine, there are got to be better ways to do it. And we discussed that also in part 17. So all this is is just prettying up the game just a little bit before final step here is where we complete the win condition so just something pops up on the screen says congratulations you beat the level and if you got a new high score it basically goes yep new high score new best score and then also again just like in uh, the game maker version all the files are maintained or all the level data is maintained in a file so both the button and the the buttons and the game will tell me what the the best score is for the specific level. And so when you finish all of this up, I believe it's just you know just over nine and a half total hours. I'm sure you could run this at one and a half speed most of the time. I'm sure I see you know, the way I talk and stuff like that, I probably go slower than I need to. I don't know this. So comments are great. For critical uh, give me some uh, positive critical thinking about what I do here. That's great. But nine and a half hours of work here and you have a complete working product. The game works, the engine works, you have a game maker version, you have a portfolio piece that you could put out and show off to the world that you made this work. And I didn't just give it to you, I taught you how to make it work, so that makes it even better. So that that's where the party comes in. Nine and a half hours into this, it all works, the whole game is perfect. I haven't noticed any bugs with it, but I, maybe I just haven't played it enough. But then, of course turning this into something bigger and better would be the next step and that's something we don't have the time or at this point in time I do not have the ability to go ahead and push this into part 19 and beyond. So that pretty much covers our introductory look at what's going to be going on in this series. I don't know how many people are actually going to watch this especially to this level but so be it. So as always though with me swordb at cod.edu is my email address my school, my, you know, my college email address if you have any questions or comments or or whatever it is you have, that's the place to get a hold of me. Uh, it's probably better because I see that all the time rather than comments here on YouTube. I don't check my, I don't see that alert all the time, and sometimes it takes a long time for me to notice that you commented, or in some cases I don't notice at all. So just swordb at cod.edu is a better way to get a hold of me. So we're going to move on to part one here. I'm all done, but you guys are moving on to part one. So I say good luck, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.